Um, so let's go and confirm how we do f of x to g of x. So, you know, basically what we're saying is, you know, how can we go from f of x to g of x? Now, sometimes we might want to think, sometimes it might be just easier to use a dot. And let's pretend we have no idea what this dot or what this function, let's, you know, we don't really know very well what the cosine graph looks like, at least at this stage in the class. So let's just pretend this is a, some dot. And right now we know that this dot is three units to the right and one unit down, right? At least you understand the transformations here, right? So let's just represent that as a dot. Even though it's not a point on the graph, let's just represent that. One, two, three, down one. And then let's represent these transformations as a point on the graph. They're not actually the point on the physical cosine graph, but just on that graph. So that's going to be two and then up one. Let's do a star. So basically the question I'm asking you is which transformations do you need to apply to my f of x function to get to my g of x function. Another way, maybe sometimes to ease, break this down, what transformations do I need to apply to this dot to make it go to the star? Well, obviously, you guys can see it needs to go one unit left and two units to up. Would you guys agree? Yeah. And that's basically exactly what we were going to do for these functions. We don't really know where the points are, but we understand that the graph, we need to have a um, shift one left and shift to up. And if we applied those transformations to this f of x, we would get the cosine graph. Now, this next one, again, looks a little bit, we need to kind of simplify this, because this one's not as straightforward as the other problem. So first thing, I see this, and I say, ooh, I got that b, right? Just kind of like over here, you got to simplify it. So I'm going to rearrange that and factor out the x. Hopefully you guys are following me here, not going too fast. Just kind of simplified it and factored it out. I rearranged the terms and then factored it out. Yes? Where did you get the two from? Uh, I have no idea. I was grabbing the two from there, I guess. <laughs> All right. So um, now let's kind of think of this. We have a 5 to a 3. Now again, this is, this is multiplication, right? So you got to think you're multiplying. You were multiplying by 5, and now you're multiplying by 3. So how do you change this? You don't want to add 2 to it. You got to think now multiplication. So it's really saying you know, 5 times what number? Let's use, if we use a, a p, or let's use n. 5 times what number equals 3? Well, if you solve for n, you get n equals 3 fifths. Now, is that a compression? If n was equal to, um, again, think about this. Right now, this is a vertical stretch of 5. Now, then it turns to a vertical stretch of 3. So what happened? Did the stretch get larger or smaller? Smaller. smaller. So therefore, this, and this would make sense. That represents a vertical compression, right? right? And that makes sense, because that's less than 1. So we could say that is a vertical compression of 3 fifths. You see the negative. There was no ne or there is a negative there, and there's a negative there. So the negative didn't change, right? So we don't need to add the reflection or change the reflection. Um, oh, I'm sorry. There, I'm looking at these two equations. This is just a simplified version of this. There is no reflection here, and now there is a reflection, right? So that reflection is a reflection of the y-axis. You can do the AOR. Yeah. Um, my graph was originally shifted two units to the right. Now it's one unit to the right, so that's going to be left one unit. And my graph was shifted up two. Now it's not shifted at all, so therefore it got shifted down two units. Right? Once you guys agree, if there's something, if the point was shifted up two and now it's not shifted up at all, it went down two units. And then we just say down two. Yes, question. How do you know when you get vertical stretch versus vertical compression versus horizontal compression? The size. Obviously, if it's outside, it's vertical. Okay. If, it's, if it's larger than 1, it's a stretch. If it's between 0 and 1, it's a compression. Okay. If it's inside, it's horizontal. And it's, it's flip-flopped for horizontal and 